Okay, so you're looking for a car under $30,000. You've accumulated 30 grand in your bank, which officially, by the way, makes you eligible to be my baby daddy, Sh sugar daddy. <laughs> I'll go over my late night ride along services at the end of this video. So for now, what are the best cars that you can buy under $30,000? I built this list on a few ideas. First, reliability. Since we're getting into more expensive range, we wanna make sure the car is something that'll run for a while, but also sustainability. I'm not talking about that eco-friendly bullshit. I'm talking about sustaining our wallets. The car should not make us bleed money every year. And finally, it should be fun to drive. It should give you that joy every time you go out, whether it's a long drive or a grocery run. And on the side, I also took into account practicality for the family man. So we definitely have a little something for everyone here in this video. Now, before we get into car number one, please smash that subscribe button because it really helps grow a small and growing channel like the Wangan Loop. We're trying to raise money to buy a Lamborghini and there's some real progress being made. Also, we have an Instagram at the Wangan Loop and a TikTok, so please follow us there as well. It really helps us out and you get more car content. Okay, car number one, the Kia Stinger. Okay, okay, please. Wait, I know I started with a Kia. I did the same thing in my best cars under 20K video as well. And I took way too much heat for that. But look, even though stock Kias are not so hard to steal, you can get the system upgraded relatively cheaply. And I don't want that to take away from what an amazing car this is. The Stinger supports 300 to 368 horsepower. So there's plenty of that along with a base 2.5 liter turbo four or a V6 with a little bit more cash. All of that's paired with an eight speed automatic to deliver an experience that'll put a smile on any enthusiast's face. We're talking about a zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. 4.6 seconds, my apologies. On the interior, you're getting all the bells and whistles of a modern premium carriage. Eight inch infotainment system with a 10 inch option. You're getting navigation, Bluetooth, Android Auto, a very clean dashboard and a front panel that is obviously luxurious. Now let's go to the exterior and I'll say this again, road presence. This thing looks so mean in any color option except white and personally, I would recommend black or Nardo Gray. And finally, this is really important, Kia's legendary warranty. We're talking a limited warranty for 60,000 miles or five years and a powertrain warranty for 100 thousand miles or 10 years and that easily beats all of the other you know car maker competition but the next car on this list i personally took on a 400 mile road trip on a single tank of gas ladies and gentlemen the bmw g20 look personally i'm not a beamer guy or at least i wasn't but they did the g20s perfectly. It's a three series with an impeccable engine and a completely redesigned exterior and interior and it very closely resembles the five series. And with a little more cash, you know, maybe a, you put in a little bit more extra hours at, you know, McDonald's, flip a few more burgers, you can secure yourself an M340i with a B58 engine. And if you don't know what this is, if car engines had a hall of fame, the B58 would be in there. So back to the BMW 330i, we're talking an incredibly built interior with full leather carbon fiber options for the center console and accents that just look fantastic. But where the 3 Series really shines, just like I, honestly any other BMW, it's in driving. It is especially driver focused. Amazing handling, turbo response, there's a speaker fed engine noise, but it still sounds really good. And there is more than enough power to tear the highways. Oh wait, one more thing I love, it's the trunk. You can fit at least two American sized Americans and still have space left over. It's the largest trunk by far when you're looking at other rivals in this range. On the other hand, we have car number three, the new C class, which is basically a baby S class. Now number four, let's throw a curveball. I mean, we've been hammering the sedans and we will get into the SUVs in this range. But before that, let's talk about some coupes. And let me introduce you to the Toyota Supra. Just kidding, relax, calm your tits. That's like 45,000, we're not there yet. So instead, how about the GR86? First of all, I don't know why Toyota gets so much heat for build quality. 
I've experienced many Toyotas in my life being an immigrant child and their build quality was fantastic. And I would even say that even today, they are built very well. Now the GR86 comes in with a 2.4 liter 4C engine that is naturally aspirated boxer engine. I personally prefer the turbocharged engine you get in like the Porsche 718, but you are still getting a very pure driving thrill that is rear wheel drive. 228 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. This is a small and very light car, so punching the throttle is easily going to push you in the back while the car accelerates and also it handles really well. I love the look of the car as well. I mean, it's gigantic air intakes and directional cutouts. Plus, color options are finally proper. The halo gray and solar shift orange easily my favorite. Now, to get inside the car, there are two rear seats as well, which is surprising that they fit in there, but obviously it's not meant for humans, it's more like duffel bags and cargo. But there is also a nicely sized trunk you can put some wings in as well. So my point is, even though it's a coupe, it can very well be a daily driver for a lot of people and might even be more practical if you're living in like a city like Philly where it's going to be a lot easier to park. You're gonna get around a lot easier on the narrow roads and it's not too low where you're gonna be worried about scraping the bottom. Now where you wanna be careful with the GR86 is the options. Look, there's a base, a premium, and a Trueno edition and there's also a 10 year anniversary edition. Pay for the premium or the 10 year anniversary edition. That's basically if you wanna get the most value for your buck. It is simply one of the best affordable sports cars you can buy and the newest 2024 models are coming in at right around 30K, but there are used options abundant as well. Now for number five, let's get away from some of the coupes, let's get away from the sedans and let's talk SUVs, at least for the next few before we get into special picks. So for number five, I don't know why I'm doing it like this. I present to you a surprising choice, perhaps a car that I really like. I've had it in Toronto. I'm talking about the Porsche Macan from like 2018, 2019. You can still pick these up for about 30K and with 20 to 30,000 miles on them, which is not bad considering it's a Porsche. And that means phenomenal build quality, heightened attention to detail, premium materials throughout and just overall Porsche. To start, the interior of the Macan is very much like other sports lines like the 911 or the 718. You're getting a very similar wheel and infotainment system, the gauge cluster with a ton of premium options and that's a good thing because everything, I mean everything, is very much driver focused. The back seats though, they're not the most spacious, especially larger people or adults, it might be a bit of a squeeze. All that squeezing is going to make way for a huge trunk that can fit a lot of cargo. For performance, well, it's a Porsche and it's actually quicker than some boxsters. Under the hood you get an option between a turbocharged four-cylinder making 248 horsepower or a turbocharged V6 making 348 horsepower. Both options are going to come with all-wheel drive and both of them will get you the snappy fast auto response thanks to Porsche's fantastic PDK automatic gearbox. And of course there's that exterior. Like it or not it has road presence and a certain element of premium class. Plus, you get the Porsche badge, so you can't go wrong. But wait, for number six, another SUV. Let's talk about the all new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLB. I almost bought this like two years ago, seriously. Now this is going to be love or hate again, but I've seen a ton of these in Toronto and their affordable price, plus the G-Wagon-esque shape makes them especially desirable. The GLB is basically a baby G. It's got an AMG trim as well that puts out 302 horsepower from its 4C AMG tuned engine. More importantly, it looks super mean and I love that. The interior though is kind of whack, I'm not gonna lie. It has all of Merck's technology, uh, its infotainment system and gauge clusters. It's got fantastic accent lighting. It's also got really good quality leather and materials, but it rattles, does rattle a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. What's also really funny, the GLB has three rows for seating. The first two rows are for adults. The third row is tight and really only for kids or extra cargo. 
but I'm a big supporter of third rows in SUV. Now, if you do upgrade and go to the AMG trim, which in my opinion is the only right way to do it, you do get the AMG flat bottom steering wheel and the AMG branding all over the car. In the GLB, there's just a ton of value for the price, and I do see these around the city a ton. Okay, so we've had our sedans, we've had the coupes, we've had the SUVs, we were coming down to our final four, and I'm about to throw you guys some hella curveballs, so strap up. First, the 2021 or 2022 Genesis G70. I've said this in one of my previous videos too, but this car is hot. It's an acquired taste for sure, but it can do it all. Under the hood, it's got a two liter four cylinder engine that sends out 252 horsepower through an eight speed automatic to the rear wheels. It's got the base of a Kia Stinger doing zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds, but takes the luxury factor up a few notches. The build quality is fantastic, just like the C-Class. The driver focus is also there with streamlined controls and handling and a driving experience that's kind of similar to this 3 Series. This car is really doing it all for a couple thousand dollars less than its German counterparts. For number eight, I don't know what this is, one more family car, the 2020 BMW X5 S-Drive 40i. I'm really only saying this because in black, this thing looks fantastic and serious road presence. The drive is very much BMW as well, so the steering feedback, throttle response, and handling are all top notch. I'm actually going to say the back seats on the Beamer are a little bit more spacious than the Macan. But the Macan has more cargo space, so it's a give and take. Relax, calm your tits. Porsche did not lose. Stop it. Now for the final two weeps. Weeps. Things are getting hard, okay? We had to research this stuff. So number nine, oh boy. The Lexus 350 F Sport. This had to be on the list. Look, I didn't really care all that much about Lexuses until this summer. My friend bought a GSF and let me drive it on the Pennsylvania back roads, and it was actually fantastic. And the 350 F Sport offers an affordable entry into the world of excellent Japanese build quality, premium materials, and an excellent driving experience. More specifically, we're looking at 311 horsepower V6 engine underneath the F Sport package, the body line that gives this car a very unique look, and of course, Say it with me, road presence. And finally, number 10, the round out to our 2023 list of best cars under $30,000. We have the, did you smash the subscribe button? If you haven't, please do so. It really makes all the research and time that goes into these videos worth it. Number 10 is a car maker we haven't even mentioned yet, but I have like six friends with this car and they all live in Toronto. This car is their daily driver and from what they tell me, it's an absolute treasure. This is a car that anyone can enjoy. It's for everyone. So it's not really made for a specific group of gearheads or the family man. We're, we're talking about the 2020 Audi Q5. This is not a car that's about the drive. It's all about the driver. Relax, sit back in your luxurious leather and be surrounded with top of the line technology. The cabin is also super quiet with some of the best build quality, but also there's a lot of insulation, so there's very little road noise as well. Power all of this is the 252 horsepower turbocharged four cylinder engine with a seven speed automatic and of course all wheel drive. I mean, it's quattro, quattro, okay? It's plenty of power to punch around town and hit the highways, but with all that being said, you don't get the same dialed in driving experience as you do with something like the Macan. With the Q5, there's a lot less drama. It's all about getting to where you need to be in a premium SUV. And that's it, those are, that's it. The, the 10 best cars that you can buy under $30,000 that will be reliable, sustainable for a long time and fun to drive. I'm Fossil and you've been watching the Wongon Loop. Bye bye. Perks of the Sugar Daddy include having me accompany you to all your car meets and only taking pictures of your car. Plus, I'll tell everyone that you're a legendary member of the Midnight Club who decided to settle down in Pennsylvania.